Welcome everyone to Thursday Night Yin. It's a blessing to be here today. Let's begin with some light warm up. If you wish to sit on the bolster, you can, but we're gonna carry off a little bit where we left off last week. This time in cobbler pose. So again, looking at the yin in a more radical way, right? Holding the posture for three to five to 10 minutes, but implementing all the micro movements in between that can allow ourselves to sink deeper into that moment. If you've never really truly enjoyed the posture, let's hope tonight you can, because all these little movements are actually little tiny pieces by piece medicine, right? So piece by piece, the medicine starts to work. The movement is the medicine. So as you're mirroring me right now, just side to side, getting into our cobbler, nice and easy. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our elbows and we're just gonna start to lean onto one side, lean onto the other side, and try and get those knees towards the ground. Beautiful, side to side, side to side. And as we move side to side, always remember, you wanna lean as far as you can. So it's almost as if it was a body check. Notice the head's not going that way. My head is still staying level or straight, right? Of course, you're not really straight, but the head is taking that axial point as we move from side to side. Beautiful. And now from here, let's bring the hands behind us and let's make little circles at the tailbone, little tiny circles. Whenever we do this, we can feel a lot, especially if we took the core class earlier today, right? The ability to stretch through that core. And as I always say, imagine doing it without hands, which we'll get to, but just for now, Really work it, arms straight, slight bend at the elbow when you need it, but really trying to find that rotation all the way around the central channel or the spine. Good, other direction, moving in the opposite way. Oh, open it up. Big circles. And one, fantastic. Coming up now, elbows, elbows. As you look over left and right shoulder, just let the elbows go left and right while holding your cobbler for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful, slowly coming forward, relax into your cobbler. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, let it go. Nestling in, deeper breath in. Full exhale, let it out. Notice I'm coming up with the breath. Little tiny movement side to side and then down with the breath. Good, inhaling up. Lead with the heart as you exhale, bring heart towards your feet. Inhale back up. This time, crown of the head to the feet. And now we're gonna do one Brahmri to totally relax and take our yin. Here we go. side to get the emotional through the body, through the mind, through the breath. If the emotion has weight, you'll feel it when you, ah, right? You'll feel if you're feeling very light today, you, ah, it's a different feeling. 
I find the sound of us ah, such a wonderful exploration. <sighs> Especially in the first posture. Ah is the sound that releases. It's awesome. It's inspiring. It's, ah, it's very light. It's very high frequency. And you can sigh. <sighs> right? That's heavy. Right? <sighs> right? That's angry. Right? There's so much emotion that can be attached to the sound. <sighs> and you can always gauge where you are. And again, feeling the emotion through the breath by seeing its weight. How heavy is the sound when we check in and do that? And you'll notice that puts us into our heart center. And as we continue to hold the posture, we go a little bit deeper from sort of the T12 vertebrae where the solar plex is, sort of curving a little bit more into the lumbar. And imagining like a stegosaurus that your lumbar spine is able to shoot out, round back. Because if I want to go from here to my feet, all I have to do is round. And I prevent myself from rounding because I'm speaking. And to get the clearest sound, right, it's best to be directional. But just for demonstration purposes, if you are watching, right, as I curve and I come forward, you see that's where the crown starts to connect. And the spine starts to become more like a bow. And of course, I could be at that level if I was practicing in, but I'm teaching it. So I'm gr gradually bringing you there. As the seeker becomes sought, that is the mantra for the yin. Because once the seeker becomes sought, you are yin. That's when yin happens. What is yin? It's a state of surrender, according to yogic philosophy. What is surrender? Well, as it goes analogously, when we surrender, right, it's a state of release. And in yoga, we call this state liberation. When you surrender, you're liberated because you have no more fight. The challenge has been accepted and you're within it and you're moving through it. And that is a sort of analogous way to understand it. It's almost like a teacup, right? There's liquid in the cup. We want to change the, the flavor of the tea, right? So stress might bring a flavor or a sound, and we want to change that. Just like changing an instrument, we change the content of the vibration. So what's the liquid inside? By emptying out, by liberating, by releasing it, we can then refill the cup with whatever naturally sort of goes into that space. And what we're looking for to move into that space is the natural alignment. Once the stress dissipates, once we're able to fully find that dissolution, that liberation, then the realization is, is that your body wants to be healthy, that any pain is actually an imbalance. And we're trying to get the signal back to balance, back to it can always come back because it's there to help guide me. It's there to help warn me, but it's just a signal. In order to liberate the pain from that signal, that's the work of the asana. Good, deep breath in, deeper breath out. Last 10, nine, eight, seven, six, teach what's within to in front a little bit different way of coming out come up and then immediately just start to stretch start to stretch start to stretch moving over those hips and I say go slowly at first because you're gonna feel it because then we're gonna amplify it again we're actually gonna use our elbows and our elbows but that is a little bit stronger right but working it all the way through one side at a time 
Beautiful. Now back. Right? Bring the hands behind. Circles. Feel the difference. Right? It's like bringing uh, a blow dryer to an iceberg. Sometimes this lumbar area feels so tight. And we just stretched it out, stegosaurus style. Good, other direction. In our cobbler pose, and that's a really nice feeling, right? To stretch it out in that way. Whoa, fantastic. Good, elbows. Let it fly, let it loose. Look, 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 look. Look, 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 Good, and come back to center. Perfect. Beautiful. Now from here, what we're going to do is we're just going to bring our feet into cross-legged. So heels towards the hip, right? Bringing it out. And now we're going to come forward and back down. And four. If this is too much of a stretch, we're going to do it here because we're going to prepare for square today. Okay, so we can do it from here, which feels great, but just a little bit more, and we've already prepped with the cobbler. This is bringing it heel to heel, right? Doesn't matter, right or life, right or left, over the course of your life, and we'll work both sides. You'll start to feel when one starts to favor the other, and you just start to lead with the other. Right? It's not always necessary. Because again, we're getting all the benefits here. Right, so which, People always ask, which one should I sit with? Well, if it's your stronger side, that's great. But if you start leading with your weaker side, that's great because that's your future strength. And we've talked about that many times before too. Good, just stretch it out. Fantastic. Let's do it with the other side. Open it up, give it a little stretch, and then switch it up. Left side this time. Okay. So again, if it makes a difference, fantastic. If it doesn't, fantastic. Just want you to feel. For me, there's not much difference. But that's because for years I switch from left to right. And just dominant in different things like snowboarding. Like I used to ride right leg foot. And then for a whole season I decided to go left leg. Right? Just to change it. Just go back to that first level. Right? That beginning. So if you're really good at one thing, it's really good to work on. It's opposite. It's reciprocal because that's your future strength. Beautiful. Good. Fantastic. Bring the hands behind you, soles of the feet to the floor, rock side to side. Good, fantastic. We're gonna come up into a kneeling position. You can grab your bolster if you'd like to have it on your knees. A lot of people have issue with the knee. If you take issue with the knee, remember, just curl your toes. Right, you curl your toes. You can basically put the bolster anywhere. You can put a blanket. If I had a blanket accessible, it's just behind me, but I'm sure you understand. The carpet's good enough for me, so I'm just gonna sit, and the way I'm sitting is just in a very simple position, almost ready to go into a child's pose. So we call this puppy dog. So we're just gonna work puppy dog now, just like we work cobbler. Okay, side to side, side to side, side to side, and then when you go to one side, bring the elbow down, Kind of feels like you're skiing a little bit, right? Moving side to side or driving on a motorcycle, right? Weaving. Notice the hips. Bring it down. Notice how I'm lowering myself down. My head is still staying level. Good. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. You'll feel it in your lower back. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Good. Coming up. Fantastic, as we go back, little circles again. Boy, and you'll feel it, right? And that's the best part, as you move it around, little circles, right? Now we're moving toward more of a saddle-like position, right? Moving around, circles. See, we can drop down, lift up, good, other direction. Drop down, lift up. Oh. And one. Good. Coming forward into a tabletop position. Curl the toes. Curl the toes. Press back for 10, 
nine, eight, seven. Move your back. Notice all that spinal undulation. Cat, cow, cat, cow. Right? You don't have to look up, look down. Too much whiplash. Just do it through the spine. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Again, for those with knees, I'm just going to demonstrate because I know people have knee issues. I had knee issues at one point, right? Move it on over, drag and pose, right? And make sure that foot is flat and allow that back leg to stretch. Push that hip down. Remember, hip is going toward the heel. As the hip goes down towards that heel, allowing it to drop and drop and drop. Beautiful. I'm going to come a little bit closer so you can see. Good, if you don't need the bolster, right? Obviously, showing it without two, just dragging pose. So the foot is directly under the knee. The knee can come a little bit more, but again, it can't go way over the foot. That just doesn't make sense. So basically, as long as it's in this range, you're in a good place, but the best place is just above the ankle, so you can just go forward. And you'll notice with my back leg, right? I have a lot of pressure on my back foot, so I'm able to release and I'm always piloting with both arms at first, just to get comfortable and feel that I can bring that hip down. Oh, there it is, down. Bring it down, oh. Right, look up. Let's bring it down. Fantastic, good. And now let's find our yin. Nice and slowly, taking our way. You can come down on one arm, right? Little tiny micro moves or both arms, little tiny micro moves, but remember our process. We get comfortable, right? Oh, I'm comfortable here, great. Now, how do you find the comfortable edge, right? Breathing, all the way in, all the way out, until the breath goes from automatic to natural. You won't even notice the change. You'll go from long and peaceful to short and sweet, but start always long and deliberate, putting effort into your breathing. And as you go deeper and deeper with the breath, this shows me, ah, I'm still comfortable, but if I go any further, I'm not. So this is good for me, and I'll ride it with the breath, and I'll keep working on dropping that hip, right? Keep working on dropping that hip, and feeling and connecting, maybe to the point where I can go all the way down and work a little bit more specifically on trying to drop all this area down toward the ground. Oh, right, getting in the right position. So once you're on that comfortable edge, you're breathing. And what are you breathing into? Being relaxed, being comfortable. Right, that's the vicious loop from comfort to relaxation and back again. That's the yin. Because if you're comfortable and you're relaxed, then you can surrender. There's no such thing as surrender if you're not comfortable and relaxed. It's impossible. It would be a contradiction. It would be an oxymoron. So breathing all the way in, all the way out, work that comfortable edge and work it all the way through, right? You're always coming a little bit more forward, a little bit more in alignment with your body. And over time, the pain from this posture is gonna disappear. Good, 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. and one slowly coming up as you come up bring the right hand on the right knee push back push forward and start to twist as you come out as you come out slowly slowly drop that hip oh look how much space there is you might surprise yourself drop that hip and twist oh turn it around bring it back up Okay, drop that hip, hip is dropped, and twist. Whoa. Good, one more time. Drop that hip, and twist. 
good guys, fantastic. Hands, both here, pilot, forward and back, forward and back, good. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit back on the hip, okay? So sitting back on the hip, if you can't do this, modify by placing a bolster, again, underneath you, so you, you got more padding, right? The larger the bolster, the easier it is, and you can have a bolster underneath too as you do this, as some students have done with knee injuries. But coming back, I just know how excruciating this be if there is, right? And forward. Good. So now we're in sort of a half, half saddle, okay? And we're going to go all the way back in half saddle. Okay, so from dragon, now we're going back, half saddle. Okay, so you can go all the way to the ground, but I would encourage you just to start here and feel, right? Where does your body want to go down? Right? Feel the difference between the leg straight and the leg bent. Again, another idea for a bolster, if you have one, right, is you can always work the bolster rather than the ground. It just gives you a little bit more leverage, right? If your elbows go on the bolster, it's different than elbows on the ground, right? And again, I didn't want to get too excited, but for some of you, you may go down on the bolster like this because that might feel best. But notice the knee pops up, so that's not good. We don't want that, right? So we just want to go to the level. There it is, perfect, right? That it stays down because any further, you see? And we want to keep that from happening by pushing heart, 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 and breathing. Some people like to externally rotate their feet that I'll leave to you. I'm not a super fan of it, as you can see my body is okay with it, but it likes to pop a little soon. I like it actually underneath and pushing. So again, that's totally up to you, but it is it's just a slight difference in the pose. You'll feel it in a different area. Good, feel and breathing. With every exhale, curl, right, curl. Don't need the bolster, right? You're framing yourself perfectly. For some of you, you're all the way down, right? Again, uh, much. Ah, almost. Right? I'm comfortable, but my leg is popping, so not good. Stay up higher, push down, right? Let it happen naturally. Good. Let's go for a 10. Nine. Eight. Seven, six, five, feel it from the thigh all the way up into the psoas, push down, four, three, two, one, good. Remember, the easy way out is just straighten one side. What's the side you want to straighten? The one you're bent on. Right, come out of it, nice and easy. Bring yourself into deer, come forward into table. Good, instead of stepping with the right, we're stepping with the left, that leg we just stretch. That's what's gonna feel so good about this. Now you're going into a dragon pose. Once again, remembering all of the supports, your bolster under your knee, right? Your bolster underneath your hands to give you a little more leverage for when you put the elbows down, right? There's lots of reasons. But for now, just getting into a good way. Remember what I said about the knee and the foot, right? That's too far, right? But that's perfect. See, it can't go any further. That's great. And I can feel that connection in my hip. What I want to do now is push that hip. I know it feels like it won't, but it will over time. Push that hip towards that heel. As that starts to happen, this thigh opens up and the magic starts to begin. So again, with both arms, with one arm, Right, the outside arm, both arms all the way down, right? Go to your level of depth. Remember, this is the yin, right? You start with comfort, move to the comfortable edge, which is not so comfortable, but we, we, we sacrifice the comfort to get to relaxed because relaxed is the sweet spot. Relax is us liberated. We've liberated anything that prevents us from being comfortable and relaxed. And therefore we can be yin. Right? That's what yin is. Yin is surrender, full surrender. 
let go, let be, give in rather than giving up. Such a beautiful sensation, especially with the breath. Good for ten. Nine. Eat. Guide that hip toward that heel. Six. Two, and the final one. Sink that hip, one, and slowly coming up. And again, immediately left hand to knee, twist. Twist, come in and out. Ah, twist, drop the hip. It's all about dropping that right hip. Oh. Again, with the hand straight, Right, it really gives you the ability to stretch into that newfound freedom of flexibility, push it down, twist it out. That's the beauty. Feel that energy flowing through. Letting go, letting be with each and every breath we take. That's the practice. That's what we're practicing. Liberation through realization. The teaching is the realization, the teachings are the liberation. That's the beauty of it. Beautiful, good. Now from here, same thing as before, right? We're gonna come back. And as we come back, go slowly, right? Go slowly. Moving it from your dragon pose now to a more defensive posture, right? Whew. Right, if the one is the 100 meter sprint, right? What's this one? Laying back, laying back, right? And again, catching that leg, straightening the opposite one. And now you're on the leg, just like a half kneeling position, right? Half kneeling. Good. So just feel it. And then start to make your way into saddle, right? We're going into half saddle, right? So find where it feels good. Curl, because the more you curl, the more you're getting the effect. If you're back bending, it's because you have tension. Release that tension, release that tension, because it's way down is this way. Okay, and the way down is this way. And so it gets to the point where, as you see, as I pull, pull, pull down, this leg's gonna start to lift up, right? That's good. I wanna keep stretching it down, down, down without the knee pulling up, right? Getting that length, getting that strength. So when I go down my forearms, you see my heart pop? You gotta push that down. Oh, maybe it'll come up a little bit. Oh yeah, even better. Work one elbow, work the other elbow. Right, yin is a funny thing. It's not always possible in every posture, but we work toward it. Right, I'm comfortable, hey. Right, I'm breathing, I'm teaching. Conscious, aware, mindful, right? And as I breathe, as I feel, connecting, this whole thigh to this psoas, right? It's a very powerful connection. So pushing down, right? What is he talking about? Just do some cat-cows, right? Heart forward, heart back. 
Gotta get the heart back. See? And then letting it down. Every exhale, curl. Close your eyes, go inside. Good, 10. Six, five, four, three, two. Let's slowly, slowly come up. Release that leg from underneath and stretch forward into forward fold. Walk those hips back, right? Find your feet from underneath you. Get those legs as straight as you can. That's the most important part, straight legs, right? And how you work that is even try and lift those ankles right off the floor, pressing down, getting that line nice and strong. And if you think about it, look at my lumbar back as my toes curl my lumbar park shoots back, Whew. power, right? That's where the power lies, right at the base, and then it curls through, right? And that curling can go backward, right? That's the back power, but then there's the front power where you curl, so this curls, and then you pull forward, heart forward, and then start to make your approach into your dive. Working those hamstrings, so important. Hamstrings are the anchors of the body. So if your hamstrings are tight, you're not going anywhere. We're pretty much locked in, just working through the legs. But if we can get through those legs by practicing long holds every day, whether it's forward fold from sitting, forward fold from standing, or even forward fold from lying down, which is an inversion, right? If you practice this every day, it's not going to take you long. Maybe a couple months, maybe a year, but that's not long in yogic time. That's a day, right? Or half a day, right? Your life is your practice. It's not a hobby, right? There's no black belt, right? The mastery of this is bliss and joy and being able to liberate one's suffering and pain and being able to be autonomous and free in whatever situation, no matter what squalor or poverty, right? It doesn't matter, prosperity. The yoga is here to keep us balanced and non-separate from the source. The seeker becomes sought. What is known a thousand years ago, same knowledge that's going to be known a thousand years from now. It's the same consciousness. Love doesn't change in that way. Right. What is unconditional has always been unconditioned. It has no conditions, so there's nothing we can say to it, nothing we can do against it. It just is. When you start to feel that way in your body, even just talking about it, I just start to soften in places that I didn't even know I was holding tension. Because again, the teaching just is like a rose. It has a beautiful fragrance, a scent. Good, 10. Three, 
two. And one. Good work, guys. Beautiful. Slowly, slowly come up. Bring the soles of the feet to the floor. Rock those knees side to side. Oh, side to side. And again, you're going to feel all that energy. There's lots of it today. Right? Nice sequence, nice movements, good flow. Right, sending it from hips to heart and then heart up into your head. Forward fold, backward bend, twist, right? Two. Good. And one. Fantastic. Let's go for square. So square starts like a, uh, like a twist, seated twist. We take the foot from behind us, flip it around. If you'd like to support yourself because you know you have high knees, high knees mean that when you sit cross-legged, your knees sit up. You can always sit up on a bolster, okay? I'm just gonna show it from the ground today because other days I always show it with the emphasis on bolster, but today you guys get the gift of this, right? So here we are in this position, right knee is on top, okay? You take the heel of the foot, you cross it on top, and you see I'm sort of aiming where I want my knee to fall. If I have knee issues, I hold my knee, I curl my toes, and I cradle it like a baby. If I don't have knee issues and I'm good, I can use my hand, okay? Again, I'm not pushing, right? I'm just using it as kind of like a lever. I'll try and lock it for you to see. Okay, I've locked it. Now watch. See, I'm not pushing. It's the weight of my body. Pushing is this. That's gonna do damage because you're gonna rip something. That's why yoga goes with the breath, right? First comfortable, am I comfortable here? Yep, right? I start to breathe, I start to breathe, I start to move up a little bit more, I start to move up a little bit more. If you end up here for the rest of the hold, that's fantastic, right? There's, I'm feeling it in my body, it's going but I can go a little further. And then once you go a little further, you wanna pin it by having your elbow down. And there's your square. Right? If you're working on your square, right, keep using the other hand, keep bringing it down. Eventually you'll get to here and here and then here and then here and then here and then eventually moving all the way forward, right? Holding your square. It's a very powerful posture. I like to call this double pigeon. And I just rock back and forth back and forth and all that pain in the back body and the hips just starts to let go, starts to release. And just like a falling leaf, right? From the top of a tall tree. Even when I make my way to the ground, Right, so if I was doing the yin, I might be here by now. And even here, I'd still do little movements because I'm a willow tree. You know, a tree is still in surrender, but it's still growing. The one thing I want to revitalize with the yin is let's stay in the posture for a long time, but let's do a lot of stuff to get to that authentic place of yin. Not the place where when I started doing yin and I just constantly forced myself to hold the posture for five minutes and it was all ego. And again, liberated my own ego through yin with yin. <laughs> the yin taught me because the yin started to say, hey man, that thing is relaxed. It's a, it's a glass bottle floating on the water. That thing's relaxed. And yet it's just going whoop a doop a doop a doop 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 on its merry way. It's fine, right? You can have all the sounds, all the teachings. If you speak in the language of silence, you're going to hear silence. If you teach true yin, right, giving you permission to go into it when you are ready, you'll find it. It's there waiting for you. It's always there. It's just at the depth of who and what. We are and doing. Good, 10. Nine. Eight, ground. If there's any sensation, pain, ground it. 
push it into the earth. The earth is where it belongs, not your body. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Good. Slowly coming up. Easy peasy. And again, just spend some time going back to those areas, right? Going back to the knee now, right? Maybe moving a little bit across or backward. You'll notice now, even me, my knee's not lifting at all anymore, right? It's kind of neat, right? When you really push it through, right? It just stays down because now you can feel the weight of the body. Before, it kind of always was shooting up. And now I feel it very relaxed. And again, because of the class we're having today with who's attending, thank you again for showing up tonight. Always beautiful to have different arrangements. Slide onto one side, okay? Slide to one side, one more move tonight. Special bonus for the two of you. Bring it here. And now this is how you start to work for me, how I started to properly work, because I did injure myself before I started to work like this slowly, methodically, with the breath, and over time, right? So no forcing, right? So notice I'm not pushing, right? I, I used to do that. And that's what, I used to do things like this, and I'd see other yogis doing different things, but ultimately it's just a little bit of weight and tiny rocking movements. And so this is level one, right? Doing it through the pigeon pose. And you know you can graduate when you feel comfortable that the knee can just naturally kind of go down and it feels good. If it doesn't, you're gonna still work here. And remember, you can always protect your knee by curling your toes, perfect. For everyone else, bring that heel all the way up. And this is how realistically you start working with the lotus pose. Because again, slowly, notice I'm not pushing, I'm just going forward and back. If my body can't do this, then I can't do lotus, right? There's too much pinching in the knee. I feel no pain, but I just wanna make sure that you feel no pain. And don't force yourself into it. This is a harder posture. The heel is now lifted. The leg has a lot more weight to the ground. You're gonna feel it here. If you don't feel it, right, the next third level is pull back, right? Do that curl, right? So from the side, it's just like we did in our saddle. Curl, right? Curl. And you'll notice the legs will come down, but there, ah, oh, there's the stretch, right? And again, it's not pushing, it's just kind of massaging it in the right direction at the right time as I come back, massaging it out in the direction that I want it to go. And as I push down, I can lift up. Okay, forward, push down, oh. forward, push down, forward, push down. Right, 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Now from here, just take your leg up, give it a nice hug, right? And then slowly bring it down. Bring it up, bring it down. As you bring it up, give it a hug. As you bring it down, lay it on the floor. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. Let that leg go, feel, ah, yeah. All right, just play with it. Give it a feeling, move it around. Give it a little shake out. Good. Awesome, let's go to the other side. The left leg now, whoop, all the way around. Okay, grab hold. This time I got the left leg, right? And what do I start doing? I start aiming this foot towards this knee. So I'm aiming, I'm doing it through the camera, but if I was doing it on my own, I'd wanna get them parallel to each other. Again, it's very similar to this cross, but it's only on top, but we don't do that lift because it's a little hard. It's easier to go from the side down. And of course, because I have the flexibility, you know, I don't need the hand, but 
the hand also feels really good. So I always start this way. All right, see, I'm rolling over. So I'm trying to get both sit bones down, sit bones down. There's no point doing it if I can't, right? So if I end up here for the rest of the posture, that's great because now I can work on this side, see? And eventually getting the heel a little higher up. There's a little divot in your ankle, lines everything up. And again, our foot is going right into that crevice. Our knee is going right into the crevice of the foot. So again, lots of space, as you can see now, as I sit here, my knee is not naturally going down. But by the end of this pose, again, you'll be a believer, right? It's a beautiful thing to feel the magic of the asana, just getting into a yin way and creating that permanent lasting change, going through the connective tissue to the ligaments, to the tendons, to the deepest parts of the bones, right? Basically where the meat falls off the bone. It's like slow cooker, right? Different than barbecue, different than oven, right? Slow cook. That's what we're going for, good. Once here, start to prepare, right? Whatever your frame is, if this is it, then that's what you're doing, right? With a bolster, without. But now I'm starting to make that connection and dropping that weight, not assuming that my left side is my right side. My right side, obviously, even for me seeing it on the camera, is more flexible than my left. But again, still no sensation, still very comfortable being able to do this. Again, you see my toes are curled, I'm protecting my knee just in case, but over time, I can start to relax it a little bit more because my knee is safe because the stretch is coming from the hip. Good, as we come forward, right? Again, keep that weight on or start to pressure a little bit more with the chest, right? Getting a little bit more in there, good. All that tension that's pushing back in your body, ground it into the floor grounded into the floor, right? All that energy, that popcorn, push it into the floor, breathe into it. You guys know how to do this. Long and peaceful breathing. Take all that energy, push it out through your tailbone, through your fingers, through your feet, through your legs, through your hips, through your back, through your heart, all the way down, down, down to the earth. The earth deserves it. The earth is calling for it. It wants the suffering back. It wants the pain. It wants to ground it. Don't hold it. Release it. Let it go. Let it be through every breath that you can see. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Three, two, and one. Slowly coming up. And again, start moving right away. Don't get caught into not moving. Left, right, hand down. Again, we all feel 40 years older when we do yin. Right, but even you can see with the knee, although it's still up, a lot less up than what it was before, and it feels very good going down. Right, so whatever was pushing up on me has now been released, or almost released. I would do a little bit more here, but again, it's more here, right? That's where I'm feeling the issue. Right? And that's where we're gonna go into the next place, into our next posture. So again, just allow yourself to flow in and out. Ah, right, let it go down. Good, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Beautiful. Lean back. Again, kick out that leg. Ah, and drape the other leg right over top. Good. So you start in a pigeon-like pose. And again, as you can see, a little different than the right side, right? Oh, I can still do it, but... 
again, it takes me a little bit more work. I can feel that my shoulder actually pushes up. There's a lot more tension in one leg than the other leg. Not a bad thing, right? It's asymmetrical. It is what it is. So just working it now, working it, working it. And again, if you can do this and you feel fine with it and you're like, this is great, right? Go a little higher, right? Start to bring that foot a little higher. As you bring the foot a little higher, the knee will come up, right? But if the knee doesn't come back down, you've gone too high, right? So it has to be able to go up and down, right? That's the feeling, right? Feel, right? And then once we get into that feeling, we start to come forward just like we did in the last round. And that's where I told you, I'll get to it. This one will help me get there, right? Feel, right? As you come back, feel forward and back. So I'll show you from the side, just like our saddle. So again, it can be anywhere it wants, but the whole point is that it can be down there on its own. It takes time to get there, so come back. That's hard. Stretching that whole line, you see? Stretching it. Stretch. Right, you can do that from here. It's the same feeling. Maybe if you're stuck overdoing it, ego style, right? Come back to here. Feels great. Oh. And then you can always revisit it. Minute 10. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Kick it out. Ah, give it a little shake. Forward fold. Good. Good. Grab hold of your knees and rock. Tuck your chin, just rock it out. How do you rock? Literally, you just kick, kick toward your heels. Kick out, kick toward your heels. And all you do is tuck your chin. When you get really good, you can just straighten your arms and just do it literally with the momentum. Whatever you come down with, you can come up with. You come down with, you come up with. It feels so good. This was taught incorrectly to me for years, and I used to injure myself, which was really funny because I used to think rocking was like my head come all the way up and down. It's just very light movement. It's like a C, like a rocking horse for children, or that rocking chair behind me, right? Right, just rocking, deep to deep to dee, right? Deep to dee, the momentum, oh, the same. Fantastic. Good. Let's do one more posture on the floor. This time it's gonna be an inversion. Okay, coming back, knees to chest, kick up and behind you. That space, bring your hands to your lower back. Good, from here, elbows come in, knees drop down and you find your way into snail. If you like snail, great. If you wish to do shoulder stand, you can do that as well. Either way, if shoulder stands too much, just stay in snail. Snail is the yin version of shoulder stand. So if that's the yang, then this is the yin. Okay, so breathing here, feeling here, getting your frame. And again, if this is too much, right, you can always use a bolster. And same thing, kick up, right? But that's it now. Now you can just hang out <laughs> in your snail. Right, that's the move. We're doing it without bolsters today. We're supporting ourselves. Kick back, connect, drop into your snail, feel. Yeah, I like to bring my knees closer toward my shoulders. Bounce a little bit, feel. Knees to forehead, right? Knees apart, right? There's all sorts of ways. I do like the knees on the forehead. It just helps me focus, right? Deep breath in, deeper breath out. Hard to breathe in this pose. Very important to breathe. All the way in and all the way out.
ten. And right now I'm just relaxing my knees on my forehead as you see with my feet moving I actually feel a lot of the weight it feels really good again the weight is still on my shoulders right I'm piloting everything with my shoulders I don't even need my hands they're just there to help so if anything gets uncomfortable just really focus on what you're doing that's why we rocked because this is ultimately just further rocking back five Four, three, two, and one. Kick the legs all the way behind you. Grab hold of your legs slowly, slowly. Try and lower one vertebrae down at a time for 10. Oh, there it is, nine. First crack. Wish you guys could hear on the inside, right? Like a stethoscope. One day, the technology is six, five, four, three. Oh, I had to. And one. Good. That takes a long time to do that. If you fell out, it's all good. Just go through happy baby, stir up, soles of the feet to the floor, and just massage it out left and right. Oh. And of course, whenever we end with an inversion, it is the best Shavasana. So let's lie back, relax, spread open. Remember, if there's any back pain, just put your soles of the feet on the floor, right? Right, <sighs> totally fall asleep like this. Right, and that's the whole purpose of the Shavasana. If you can answer, can I fall asleep? Then you're doing it right, right? That's important, you're that relaxed. The whole body is being grounded right now. It's the same as your cell phone being put onto one of those chargers, right? The energy can be exchanged just by being flat and not doing anything, right? If the phone is on, it's using resources and energy, right? This is just science, it's math. If it's adding more than it's subtracting, right? That's when it's recharging. But if it's subtracting more than it's adding, right? Then we're draining. Right? So we could get power, but if we're using more power than we need, that's generally what happens. So let's squeeze our glutes, release. Squeeze our glutes, release. All the tension from the body. Stretch out five-point star. And let's begin with the sound of ah. Deep breath in. Ah. Sound of E. E. yourself become expansive close your eyes right go behind closed eyes and then squeeze your eyes tighter than tight the blackest black you've ever seen tight 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 and 
then relax behind closed eyes and see the picture show of your nervous system, of your mind, of your energy. The colors appear, the shapes. What do we see when we look into the unseen? Can we know that by going into the unknown that we can become known as the knower? Awareness setting us on a quest to know, to see, and choose to be all that we are. Shavasana is a pure resting state of this infinite potential. Just recharge. It's as simple as that. When the mind wanders, recharge, because it's using energy. The whole point of the practice is that so we could be still. Even though the world might be moving around us, right, we are still. We are both the storm and the eye of the storm. Uh, number 10. Savoring every moment. Eight. Seven. Six. Slowly, gently, rocking head side to side, twinkling fingers like stars. Roll out through the feet, bring the soles of the feet to the floor, drop the knees side to side, stretch over your head, lengthen it all the way through your body, back, back, oh, and then move through forward fold. Oh. With helping hands, let's come up to a comfortable seated position. Good. You might feel very sore in your tailbone today. That's normal. So if you want to sit on the bolster, feel free. And just to give yourself a little cushion because it's just sensation. It will disappear in a second. Good, sit comfortably side to side. Side to side. Oh. <laughs> side to side. Push away. Push away. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, oh, four, three, two, one. Good, hands together. And again, start to move through each and every vertebrae in the spine. Right? Feel, 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 feel. feel. <sighs> Energy massage, right? Energy healing. Increasing neuroceptive abilities, right? Somatosensory, motor, the whole connection to the brain from the hands going input to output. Feeling the heat, but also creating it. Whoo, let it go, let it flow. Always feels good after in class. A really invigorating fire start or tapas. Right? We feel the devotion of our practice. You know, there's an intensity right now. It's not the same at the beginning, right? It's different at the end. The key is to start how we finish. How do we remember this feeling for when we start yoga? Not with righteousness, right? But with reverence.
and respect, right? Born of love, unconditional love for all beings. And most importantly, especially for ourselves, self-love is almost oxymoronic because in this state, what self is there to love? The self is love. And let's seal that, know that, as we chant the mantra om, slowly bringing the palms together to Namaskar Mudra over the heart. Deep breath in. see, are, and be. The divine in me sees and shares the divine in you. In love, with love, through love. Thank you so much for coming out and practicing today. Namaste. Yay! Mm -hmm. That was great, guys. You're so welcome.